Hey, I'm Stefan Kessling, Rob Bernacki, Roy Van Vliet, and we're doing how to maintain the guillotine choke and not let the guy escape. And I'm going to volunteer uh, young Rory's neck instead of mine, and I'm going to work the camera. All right, I have a, a notion, an idea, a concept, if you will, that might help you with the application of your guillotine. Uh, one of the things that you're going to find happen very often when you're applying a guillotine on someone is depending on the angle of their body relative to yours, they may be able to perform what's called a peek out and they will be able to turn the corner and move to your back. Right? Alternately, you may be attempting to hold on to a guillotine in like a guard situation, like down here, and you're trying, you're pulling up, you're trying to finish, and your partner is able to pop their head out, or they're able to push your arm up a little bit, strengthen their posture, and now your arm is caught. There are a lot of situations where people are trying to finish a guillotine by squeezing and pulling up on the neck uh, in some fashion, when what you need to maintain anytime you're trying to perform any submission is a what we call a broken alignment. Right? There are three elements to alignment, base, posture, and structure. In this case with the guillotine, the main element we're trying to compromise is posture. So if, for instance, if I'm trying to squeeze on a guillotine like this and Rory keeps his head up, no matter how hard I squeeze, even though he's letting me do it, I just, I'm not able to finish uh, on the guillotine. So what I want you to concentrate on is when your arm gets around the neck, try to bring your armpit over the back of your partner's head at the crown so that you are bending their head, bending their neck, and breaking their posture. So you can use a chin strap grip for this, which is what I'm doing here, or you can use just a regular guillotine grip. I recommend certainly a chin strap grip at first and breaking posture before even attacking the guillotine, but if you happen to find yourself already in the guillotine and you feel like somebody is really strengthening their neck, don't squeeze. If I try to finish the guillotine, now he covers my arm, he starts to go behind, and now I'm getting myself into a really compromised position. So, again, it doesn't matter what type of guillotine you're doing. Whether you're doing the Marcelo Garcia style high elbow guillotine, more of the Hanzo Gracie style arm in guillotine, it doesn't matter. What matters is that I come here. So my shoulder goes from covering his neck to basically making his neck disappear to covering his head to breaking his posture. And even in this, let's say Rory is hand fighting me. And now I know that I'm not going to be able to finish on the guillotine. As long as I have his posture, he's going to end up on bottom. So regardless of what is happening with your guard, for instance, if I'm playing a butterfly guard and I get Rory's head here, but I don't break his posture and I try to sweep him, he just hops over my guard. But if I'm playing my butterfly guard and I get Rory's head down and I break his posture, I barely have to do anything. In fact, I swept him without using my legs. This is exceptionally helpful for those of you that play the sit-up style collar tie escape, again made famous by Marcelo Garcia, and they man you manage to slip someone's head down here. If I'm squeezing immediately, then he's just going to take my back or wrench my shoulder. But if I get this grip and I start pressing his head down, and again, I don't have any guard, but because I've got Rory's posture broken, I can flip him over and now I can come up on top continuing to maintain his posture. So you don't just have to use it to finish the guillotine. It's a concept that will help you use the guillotine as a control position, which frankly all good submissions should also act as control positions that you can maintain without actually finishing the submission. So break posture, make sure that you are focusing on that as the initial stage of the attack, as the maintenance of the attack, and as what you're using to allow you to finish the attack, and I think your success rate with the guillotine will go up tremendously. So one problem that you may run into when attempting to focus on this posture is somebody's head popping out here. Uh, it's important when we're doing, again, regardless of what style of guillotine you're using, is that I'm not ever allowing my partner's head to come out towards my chest in any way. I'm always keeping my armpit over the back of his head. And whether I use the chin strap grip, and the chin strap grip, again, I highly recommend here because if I'm using this grip and Roy, turn your chin a little bit, start to pull your head back, he can create a profile with his jaw where he slips out directly. Whereas if I'm gripping the chin and he turns his head, there's no way that his head is going to pop out of this space. Now you notice how as we're turning, I am actually bringing my chest over his head in this case to keep it from popping out, keep trying to pop your head out. Now I return to just my armpit being over top. If the angle changes, my head stays over top. But I never want to willingly give him 
this position. I'm always trying to keep my armpit here and cover his head, and if I need to, my chest comes over top as I feel that my armpit is no longer effectively performing the check on the end of the lever here. So I'm working like this, and again, my arm can be over, it can be under, and I'm just making sure that his posture is never within his control. You see there how I change sides on the guillotine? I'm always making sure that his head is covered by my ribs, my armpit, or my chest. And that should hopefully eliminate that problem. And also, frankly, just give you an idea of how to recover the guillotine when someone is escaping, because none of us are perfect. Somebody's occasionally gonna get his head out here, and so now you can switch sides. And so when I lose the position, I switch sides on the shoulder. Anytime the head pops out, I switch sides and I make sure I keep covering his head. And again, it just goes back to the idea of if you control your partner's posture and break it, you're breaking them, their alignment, which makes them less effective as a grappler and it makes you more effective.